Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm instructor Jim Pytel, and today we'll take a quick look at motor nameplates by way of a series of illustrated example problems. This lecture operates under the assumption the viewers watch the motor nameplates lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet, only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. Interpreting electrical and mechanical data on a motor nameplate necessitates active participation on your part. As such, I'm asking you to please pause the lecture when asked to do so and attempt the example problems on your own. If your answers don't match those illustrated, feel free to rewind the lecture and correct any mistakes you may have made. As you're no doubt aware, a motor nameplate is in effect a mini data sheet affixed to a motor in question, describing its most important electrical and mechanical characteristics at the rated condition, a single point on its larger operational curve. Today, we'll take a quick look at a pair of example motor nameplates and put your understanding of motor nameplates, electrical power, inrush, and rotating mechanical power calculations to the test. First up, see if you can identify the manufacturer, model, and serial number for this example motor nameplate. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following data. It looks like this motor was manufactured by Baldor. The model number seems to be this string of nonsense right here. I expect this means something to the right people at Baldor. Lastly, it looks like the serial number is this string of nonsense right here. Manufacturer, model, and serial number information are important entries when ordering parts, downloading data sheets, or conducting warranty repair or replacement. Let's check out the electrical characteristics next. See if you can determine that this motor's phase, frequency, voltage, current, power factor, efficiency, and inrush code. Once we've got this data, we'll perform some calculations in a follow-on exercise. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following data. It looks like this is a three-phase motor intended to operate at 60 hertz. It appears to be a dual voltage motor in that it can operate at 230 volts in the low voltage configuration and 460 volts in the high voltage configuration. While in the low voltage configuration, it appears to draw a phenomenal 58 amps when operated at the rated condition, whereas while in the high voltage configuration, it appears to draw only 29 amps when operated at the rated condition. When at the rated condition, appears to have a power factor of 0.86. Additionally, it operates at 93.6% efficiency. The inrush code appears to be G. While we've got the electrical data right in front of us, let's see if we can perform some basic electrical calculations. First, see if you can determine the apparent power in units of volt amperes and real power input in units of watts drawn by this motor when operated at the rated condition. Let's do for the high voltage configuration. Since this is the first example, here's the pertinent formulas you'll need parent power in units of volt amperes in a three-phase AC system is equal to square root 3 times line-to-line -line voltage times line current. Real power input in units of watts is equal to apparent power times power factor. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should obtain the following data. Substituting our given values into the apparent power formula demonstrates apparent power input equals 23,105.6 volt amperes, or more appropriately, 23.1 kilovolt amperes. Substituting our given values into the real power formula demonstrates real power input is equal to 19,870.8 watts, or more appropriately, 19.9 kilowatts. You note when experiencing the rated condition, the motor operates at 93.6% efficiency. An algebraic rearrangement of the efficiency formula solved for unknown output demonstrates output is equal to input times efficiency. Substituting our given values demonstrate this motor must be producing 18,599 watts, or more appropriately, 18.6 kilowatts. A unit conversion demonstrates 18.6 kilowatts is roughly equivalent to 25 horsepower, extremely close to the nameplate mechanical power of this motor. Let's now calculate the inrush experienced by this motor upon closure of a direct online full voltage starter. Let's do so for the high voltage configuration. An inrush code of G represents the constant of 5.6 to 6.29. So let's say for center of mass and say it's equivalent to 5.945. One can estimate inrush current by using the inrush or kilovolt ampere per horsepower code in this calculation. Inrush equals the code constant times the motor horsepower divided by rated voltage times 577. Substituting these values into this equation means one would expect to see an inrush of a phenomenal 186.4 amps in the high voltage configuration. Luckily, the search doesn't last for long. I believe we've thoroughly examined the electrical aspects of this motor. Let's take a quick look at some of its mechanical characteristics, some of which we've already noted. 
See if you can determine the rated power, units of both horsepower and watts, the rated speed, the design, the frame, and the type of enclosure. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following data. It looks like this is a 25 horsepower motor that operates at a rated speed of 1750 RPM. A unit conversion demonstrates 25 horsepower is roughly equivalent to 18.7 kilowatts. Looks like this is a NEMA Design B general purpose induction motor, which means it has a characteristic speed torque curve that looks something like this. At the rate of condition, the motor turns at the rated speed and produces its rated torque. At less than the rate of condition, the motor will speed up. At more than the rate of condition, the motor will slow down. Anything to the right of the rate of condition is an underload. Anything to the left is an overload and isn't meant to be sustained for any length of time. NEMA Design B motors are general purpose induction motors, whereas NEMA Design D motors, in contrast, are for high torque, low speed applications. While we've got this data in front of us, what is the rate of torque? It's not specified in this particular motor nameplate, however, we can easily back calculate it. An algebraic manipulation of the mechanical power formula solving for unknown torque demonstrates that torque equals mechanical power times 9.55 divided by rotational speed. Substituting our given values, demonstrates this motor produces roughly 101.2 newton meters of torque at the rate of condition. Lastly, it looks like this motor has a NEMA 284T frame and has an OPSB enclosure, which stands for Open Slotted Band, which is Baldor's funny way of saying open drip proof motor. Open drip proof motors are suitable for indoor use in clean atmospheres. Ventilation openings, i.e. Baldor's super fancy slotted bands, are designed to prevent liquids and solids from entering the machine from an angle 0 to 15 degrees. All right, that wasn't too hard, was it? Let's try another example at a faster pace. This nameplate might seem a little blurry because it really is blurry. Get used to it. Sometimes nameplates are blurry, dirty, faded, or some dummy painted over it. You should still be able to make sense of most of the data and use your understanding of electrical and mechanical properties to confirm your results. Since we've had some practice already, let's try this exercise in one go. You'll immediately note this is a dual voltage motor that can operate at both 50 and 60 Hertz. Let's restrict our analysis to the 60 Hertz configuration. Here's the data I want you to find. Manufacturer, model, serial number. Mechanical power in units of horsepower and watts. Phase, frequency, voltage, current, power factor, efficiency and inrush code. Rated speed, frame and enclosure. Lastly, I want you to calculate apparent power input real power input, rated torque, and inrush, and check your work. Here's the table for inrush. Hopefully you wrote the formulas down. If not, rewind the lecture, find the formulas, and write them down in your notebook. You are now officially on your own. By all means, pause the lecture and give this your best shot. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following data. Looks like this motor is manufactured by Toshiba. The model and serial number are these strings of nonsense right here. Looks like this is a five horsepower motor. Toshiba is nice enough to do the conversion to watts for us. 5 horsepower is roughly equivalent to 3.7 kilowatts, or more accurately, 3,730 watts. Restricting our analysis to the 60 Hz entries, looks like this is a three-phase motor intended to operate at 60 Hz. It appears to be a dual-voltage motor in that it can operate at 230 volts in the low-voltage configuration and 460 volts in the high-voltage configuration. You'll note the connection diagrams on the left-hand side illustrate exactly how to set the motor up for high or low voltage operation. Swapping any two applied phase sequences would see the motor reverse direction. While in the low voltage configuration, it appears to draw 13 amps when operated at the rated condition. Whereas in the high voltage configuration, it appears to draw 6.5 amps when operated at the rated condition. Yeah, I know it looks like 8.5 amps, but it's not. It's 6.5 amps, because think about it, it's half drawn by the low voltage configuration. When at the rate of condition, it appears to have a power factor of 0 0.805 and it operates at 89.5% efficiency. The inrush code appears to be J. Apparent power in units of volt amperes in a three-phase AC system is equal to square root 3 times line to line voltage times line current. Substituting our given values demonstrates apparent power input equals roughly 5.2 kilovolt amperes. Real power input in units of watts is equal to apparent power times power factor. Substituting a given value demonstrates real power input equals roughly 4.2 kilowatts. As means of checking our work, you'll note when experiencing the rated condition, the motor operates at 89.5% efficiency. 
substituting efficiency and input into an algebraic rearrangement of the efficiency formula solved for unknown output demonstrates this motor must be producing roughly 3.7 kilowatts of real usable power output, extremely close to the nameplate mechanical power of this motor. An inrush code of J represents the constant from 7.1 to 7.99. Let's aim for center of mass and call it 7.545. Substituting our given values for the high voltage configuration into the inrush formula, where inrush is equal to the code constant times the motor horsepower divided by the rate of voltage times 577, demonstrates we might experience an inrush of 47.3 amps. The design entry might have taken you a little work to find. This particular nameplate doesn't explicitly state design, but rather says NEMA, meaning NEMA design, in this case B. Be aware of this type of trickery. You'd think all motor manufacturers would adopt a standard template and use standardized titles, but they haven't, and it is the wild, wild west out there, and absolutely anything and everything goes. The design entry might be called design, design code, NEMA, NEMA design, etc. The inrush code entry might be called kilovolt ampere per horsepower code, inrush code, or just plain code. Current has a bunch of funny acronyms. FLA means full load amperes, i.e. the rated current. NLA means no load amperes. This is the current the motor draws in an unloaded state. Sometimes the manufacturer goes to the trouble to calculate and specify inrush. If so, they might use the term LRA meaning locked rotor amperes. Long story short, be flexible and smart enough to interpret whatever weird stuff they throw at you. Looks like this motor has a rated speed of 1750 RPM, and if we know the mechanical power and the speed, we can back calculate torque by substituting this data into an algebraic manipulation of the mechanical power formula solved for unknown torque, which demonstrates this motor must be producing 20.4 Newton meters of torque at the rated condition. Lastly, it looks like this motor has a NEMA 184T frame, and has a TEFC enclosure, which stands for Totally Enclosed Fan Cooled. This type of motor prevents the free exchange of air between the inside and outside of the frame, but despite the title, doesn't actually make the frame completely airtight, so don't think you can take a bath with this type of motor. A fan attached to the non-drive end of the shaft keeps the motor cool during operation. There's a bunch of other great information on this particular nameplate, including insulation class, temperature data, weight, manufacturing data, and bearing part numbers. LS is the load side, sometimes specified DE or drive end, whereas OS is the non-load side, sometimes specified NDE or non-drive end. Lastly, there's all the same data at 50 Hz. If you want another exercise, do this same drill again at 50 Hz. Of note, the rated speed at 50 Hz is slower than that experienced at 60 Hz, as one might expect. All right, that is that. In conclusion, this lecture examined a pair of illustrated example motor nameplates. We determine pertinent manufacturer, electrical and mechanical data, and use this data to calculate apparent power, real power, inrush, and torque. Remember to review this material as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.